It's Mitchell from Australia, and this is Talk the Line Saltwater Lake, where I'm going to give you an update on what's happening and also a better look at Lake Woolumbula, as pictured here. So I'm going to be putting one of my rigs, the barrel, in the water either side of the lake with the spectra running between it. As you can see in the orange, the observer points of land where people can be sit, stand there filming and the midpoint in red. Seen from the air this is over to one side of the lake so it leaves the whole other side for the rest of the lake traffic and swimmers and kayakers so it's not as dangerous. As you can see it's just under three and a half kilometers or 2.14 miles. That's the midpoint there, which is just off the lower part of the observation. The first part is only about 11 metres off the water where the line's going to be run. So that's the first observation point. Then the second observation point can be about 17, 18 metres off. And the final point in the water, down here. Now I'm not going right to the shore because I want to leave it in the water so I can do the underwater test as well as the above water test which would be out on the shore. And this is obviously after the main test of at water level to measure if there is a bulge here. The line state calculator is used to calculate the displacement of a cable over a certain distance. But first you need to find the pounds per foot in grams of the product. Now I'd like to demonstrate how I found that with the spectra. Using the diameter of the spectra, you need to find the area in square millimetres using pi r squared. Divide that by 100 to find the area in square centimetres. And multiply this by 100,000 and multiply it by the specific gravity, which is 0.98, to find the 1,000 metre weight in grams which is 85 grams. This can then be converted down to the pounds per mile and that value of weight is what we use to find the buoyancy in pounds per mile. Now this example was done using the freshwater specific gravity being 1 and subtract the specific gravity of the line being 0.98 and multiply this by the weight in pounds per mile to find the buoyancy but we need to find the pounds per mile or pounds per foot in salt water so the specific gravity of salt water is 0 0.03 and subtract the specific gravity of spectra multiply this by the weight now this is a value of pounds per mile, divide this by 5280 to get pounds per foot. And we put this value into the line state calculator over the distance of 2.14 miles in feet, that's 11,299 feet. And using the force of 78 pounds, we get a reading of 0.22 feet, which is about 2.7 inches. And we can recalculate that using just 50 pounds of force. And we get a reading of 0.35 feet, which is about 4.2 inches. Now, obviously, the saltwater lake is an assumed value of 1.03 at the moment and I've done an error propagation from 1.01 to 1.05 SG depending on the salinity and also calculated that in the line state calculator to see the upper and lower values of what we are to expect 
when measuring in a saltwater lake with these kinds of salinity. So before the test, I need to use a refractor meter to actually measure the SG of the water at the time. Some other pre-tests I'll do, other than the specific gravity of the lake, are the spectra diameter at rest and under tension, because under tension it will elongate and it can make the diameter slightly thinner, which will reduce surface area of the line, but also affect the buoyancy of the line. So that needs to be recalculated if the diameter does change. Um, the elongation of the line will be measured beforehand. Uh, the spectra actual braking strength and calibrate the dynamometers because they will be in a perpendicular location to the line because they are not waterproof so I have to have them out the water. Um, I also will demonstrate how water temperature affects the buoyancy. When it's hotter it'll be less buoyant and when it's colder it'll be more buoyant. So coming into summer it'll be less buoyant so this will help the globe side slightly and reduce the buoyancy of the line so it will not want to float as much and also I'll be doing a shorter distance test before the main test and this is to demonstrate how I'll be measuring the line in the middle that block is a styrofoam block and the red line is the water level this will be used so it will neutralize the water undulations even though it is tidally locked and even on um, within this day there still can be slight waves and water undulations so this will neutralize it and then we can put a ruler down through that styrofoam block to measure from the water from the given water line down to if there is a submerged line unfortunately after applying for the access to the freshwater lake, the freshwater drinking reservoir at Fitzroy Falls Reservoir, I've been denied access by Water New South Wales. Um, I ticked all the boxes, answered all their questions, gave them more than enough to gain access to this area. But because I said it was for scientific research, uh, they said I'm not allowed access because I'm not part of a scientific body. So if anyone would like to endorse me on this, and if you are on a scientific body, or part of a scientific group, hit me up. So we can do this in fresh water as well. Now these are the pictures I've recently got from the manufacturer. He's finished the line, and it's in the mail at the moment. It should be with me early next week at the latest, and I'll be starting these pre-tests. Now I'm still looking for as many people as I can to help me with this experiment. As you can see, I've got the line. I'm going to be doing the pre-tests and I'm going to be doing this thing before the kind of holiday period because that's when there'll be the most water traffic. And so we need to get this thing happening as soon as we can. So email me at talktheline at gmail.com. Leave me a comment. Hit me up. I'm free to all suggestions, concerns. 